Good morning, everyone. We'll start today's Metro COVID-19 press briefing with Mayor John Cooper, followed by Dr. Alex Jahangir, Chair of the Metro Board of Health and Metro Coronavirus Task Force. We're joined today by Dr. Gil Wright, Associate Medical Director of Clinical Services at the Metro Public Health Department. Dr. James Hildreth, President and CEO of Meharry Medical College. Former Nashville Mayor Bill Purcell and Ms. Andre Prince Jeffries, founder and owner of Prince's Hot Chicken. Director Chief William Swan of the Office of Emergency Management and Nashville Fire Department and Dr. Michael Caldwell, Director of Public Health are here to help answer your questions. We'll now begin with Mayor John Cooper. Good morning, Nashville. Um, good to see you. Today marks the fourth day of phase three here in Davidson County. While our 14-day average remains unfortunately elevated, our other roadmap metrics, including our testing capacity, public health capacity, and hospital capacity, are all within an acceptable range. Now, Nashville's testing capacity continues to increase. A total of more than 85,600 residents have been tested for the coronavirus across Davidson County. Just at Metro's three community assessment centers, nearly 33,000 Nashvillians have received a free COVID-19 test from one of our three community assessment partners. And in fact, we've tested record numbers of Nashvillians at our community assessment centers over the first three days of this week. 1,399 on Monday, 1,206 on Tuesday, and 1,229 yesterday. Now, I encourage all residents to visit covid19.nashville.gov for more information on how to receive an assessment and diagnostic test at no charge. And we currently have 125 contact tracing investigators at Metro Public Health, 20 more than our roadmap metrics currently require. And we are currently within 1% of our available floor beds target, and 22% of ICU beds are available, above our target of 20%. Now, as of yesterday evening, 2,193 Davidson County residents are under a quarantine as active cases. Approximately 8,900 contacts have been provided a verbal order to isolate themselves for the sake of public health. And since our citywide COVID-19 response began, nearly 8,634 individuals have tested positive and received verbal and written quarantine orders from public health. And to date, more than 6,300 residents have safely recovered from the virus based on public health reports. Now, I'd like to take a moment to thank those responsible business owners who have taken steps to protect Nashvillians and our visitors throughout our reopening. The majority of our business owners in Nashville are doing the right thing. There are 4,088 permitted restaurants and bars in Davidson County, and approximately 90% of all these permitted establishments have operated without receiving a single public health complaint from the public. Public health responds to complaints from the public, and public awareness is our greatest safety tool. With the overwhelming cooperation of business owners in our hospitality industry and their safe business practices, there has not been a single documented case of patron to patron or patron to employee or employee to patron spread of the coronavirus, according to our health department's epidemiologist. This is an encouraging fact for our reopening progress, but vigilance is required to maintain that progress. Again, our contact tracing investigations have shown the virus is not spreading as a result of Nashvillians patronizing responsible businesses or running daily errands. Our contact tracing efforts have found that the virus is spreading through households and carpools when shared between infected family members, roommates, and co-workers. Healthcare workers and essential employees on construction sites and in food processing plants without proper health measures in place remain at the highest risk of catching and spreading the disease based on public health investigations. There have been sporadic cases among retail workers, commercial business workers, and restaurant employees that have quickly been contained through proper employee screening procedures. Now, unfortunately, the coronavirus is easily spread through more relaxed and unguarded interactions with close acquaintances, family, and friends in close group interactions. 
which is why health officials have kept the informal group gathering size limit to 25 individuals and urge everyone to practice healthy habits in these more intimate gatherings like birthday parties and backyard barbecues. In phase three, restaurants and bars, retail and commercial establishments, personal care businesses, gyms, museums, and other businesses that were open in phase two are continuing to operate with their current capacities. With appropriate social distancing, these facilities and businesses are not spreading the disease. One noteworthy change between phase two and phase three is the opening of event spaces and entertainment venues at 50% capacity or a maximum of 250, whichever is fewer at any given time. Even within a larger group of 250, individuals must remain in smaller subgroups of a greater whole and practice safe social distancing. Operating at 50% of capacity allows ample social distancing between these smaller parties. Dance floors will remain closed, and event staff will be present to reinforce proper social distancing and other healthy habits. Again, the vast majority of businesses serving a large number of patrons at one time have been operating without outbreaks by observing public health orders over the past four weeks, including employee health screenings and face coverings for all staff, social distancing between individual parties, routine sanitization of high-touch surfaces, and a restriction on congregational areas. These protocols are also in place for event venues and entertainment venues opening in phase three to protect both workers and their customers. Day camps, overnight camps, schools, and educational facilities may fully reopen with stringent public health measures in place. Metro Public Health has also not found any outbreaks tied to camps already operating at half capacity, at daycares or similar facilities that are taking great care to look after our children and their families, especially Nashville's essential workers who depend on these businesses and organizations as they continue to go to work on behalf of our community. Now those businesses not taking proper precautions or simply ignoring public health orders will be investigated Metro Public Health will continue to issue citations and carry out other enforcement actions to protect public health. Ultimately, some businesses may only respond to enforcement regardless of the timing of our roadmap, but we will not let them keep Nashvilleian from safely reopening our economy. As we join other cities and states in moving on to the next phase of our respective reopening plans, remember, it is your efforts that will largely determine the success of our economic restart and the health and well-being of everyone in our community. By maintaining a safe social distance from one another and wearing a face covering whenever possible, we can limit the spread of the disease, maintain our public health metrics, and save lives. This morning, I want to welcome Dr. Gil Wright, Associate Medical Director of the Clinical Services at Metro Public Health, who is here to talk about the lessons we've learned from contact tracing and how they've informed our phased reopening decisions. I also want to welcome Dr. James Hildreth, President and CEO of Meharry Medical College, whose insightful commentary on COVID-19 and our city's response to the disease has become an indispensable part of our weekly press week briefings. I'm grateful for his work on the Metro Coronavirus Task Force and his counsel as part of our regularly scheduled COVID updates. While we are in an unprecedented time, it is important that our community still observe our shared traditions, both old and new. And if it's summertime in Nashville, that means it's time for the annual Music City Hot Chicken Festival. This is the 14th year that we are celebrating this important African-American culinary tradition, which has become one of Nashville's top local delicacies and savored the world over, from North Nashville to New South Wales. The coronavirus requires all of us to live more mindfully to keep ourselves and each other safe. So this year's festival has been tailored to our public safety protocols. Festival organizers are encouraging residents to patronize hot chicken establishments across Davidson County. And I encourage everyone participating in this year's event to wear a face covering whenever possible and make sure you maintain a safe social distance from one another. There will be socially distanced food, fun, and entertainment at all participating hot chicken restaurants across Nashville with the proceeds benefiting Friends of Shelby Parks and Bottoms. It is a pleasure to welcome Mayor Bill Purcell and the Queen of Hot 
Nashville hot chicken herself, Miss Andre Prince Jeffries, founder and owner of Prince's Hot Chicken, who are here to tell us more about this year's socially distanced festival. And now I'll turn it over to Dr. Alex Shahanger, chair of the Metro Coronavirus Task Force. Thank you, Mayor Cooper, and good morning, Nashville. Here's the latest on coronavirus in Davidson County. We now have 8,634 confirmed cases. That is 239 new cases over the past 24 hours. There are currently 2,193 active cases in Nashville, and more than 6,300 Nashvillians have recovered from the virus, or approximately 75% of all cases. Since our last update on Monday, nine Nashvillians have died because of COVID-19. My sympathies go out to all of their friends and loved ones for their loss. 96 Nashvillians have now died as a result of com- confirmed COVID-19, or 1.1% mortality for our city. Our 14-day rolling average is trending upwards. This morning, the rolling average of new cases is 133.5. That is 24 more cases per day th- than 14 days ago. However, since our update on Monday, the daily average of new cases has been flat. Here are other metrics this morning. 10.2% of all people who have tested are positive. The doubling rate of the virus today is 37.4 days. This is how many days it takes for the number of cases to double. This morning, we have 19% of hospital beds and 22% of ICU beds available in our region. And 131 people are admitted to area hospitals with COVID-19. Three months ago, when the virus first came to Nashville, the task force identified key areas that needed to improve to make sure the city was ready for this pandemic. Testing was at the top of the list. We needed to be able to have the testing capacity that would allow us to monitor this virus. For our population, we needed to conduct at least 4,000 tests weekly. Last week, around 8,000 Nashvillians were tested. And we tested more, we tested the most ever in our three community assessment centers approximately 4,500 people last week. And this week already, we are on track to, over, to um, go, do more than that. So in three months, we have the testing capacity in place to monitor the virus, and we continue to build on this capacity. Also near the top of the list was contact tracing resources. Three months ago, we had four contact investigators. Today, we have over 120. They're monitoring the spread of the virus and give us information daily that informs our response to this pandemic. Dr. Wright will have more on what this team is discovering in just a few minutes. Since March, we put in testing and we increased our contact tracing in order to best attack this virus. Now the focus is on you. Personal responsibility is a critical component of phase three. We have let our guard down over the past couple of weeks, Nashville. And, we could con- and because of this, we could result in the virus spreading even more throughout our community. So please wear your mask when you go out. When you're heading out of the house, pick up your phone, pick up your keys, and make it a habit to pick up your mask as well. Encourage your family and friends also to wear a mask. And also to our friends in the media, please help us get the message that wearing a mask is one of the most important things we can do right now. Study after study shows that wearing a mask is indeed one of the most important things to do. And I ask that everyone do this to prevent the spread of this virus. And as a customer, vote with your wallet. If you don't feel safe in a business, walk out. There's no reason to patronize a business that does not care about your safety. Finally, this reminder, our community assessment centers as well as our hotline are open today. If you have any concern about the virus, please call our hotline or go to one of our assessment centers. Even though thousands of Nashvillians are getting tested this week, the centers are still able to keep up with the demand, and I know that they will if more and more come to the test. So please come get tested if you're concerned. I am grateful for everything everyone does to help us get through this pandemic. I now would like to turn it over to Dr. Gilwright. Thank you. Good morning. On reviewing the data from our disease investigators, we found that greater than 80% of infections with COVID-19 have come from a household contact. The three jobs related to higher spread include construction, food production, and healthcare. 
which has not changed since we began the reopen. The CDC reports that there is a greater risk of COVID spread with larger group activities or gatherings and with prolonged close contact during these events. This closely ties with the top four groups that are driving Nashville's cases, which include work, as mentioned above, congregate living, such as long-term care facilities and nursing homes, household contacts, including roommates and family, larger social gatherings with friends and family, which typically involve closer contact, such things as hugging and contact for longer periods of time, as they also may not fo always follow appropriate social distancing and adequately sanitize. Over the past four weeks, there have been no significant increase in cases directly related to phase two's reopening. Phase three continues to keep businesses that were already open at the same capacity that they had in the previous phase. It also adds some uh, additional venues which may open at 50% capacity, up to 250 people, as long as they're able to maintain proper social distancing and, they will, and whichever of those is less. The move from phase two to phase three will allow more businesses to open while keeping activities which pose a greater risk to a minimum to reduce the overall spread of COVID-19. Finally, the other major change is that phase three in, is intended to last at least 28 days which will allow the Metro Public Health Department to greater gauge the changes of phase three and how they may affect the spread of COVID-19 and, and, and allow us to implement further changes as we further, if we open further. Uh, for areas that currently have a high number of cases, we've developed an action plan to address underlying drivers of the disease prevalence. We will continue to modify our current response, continue to target interventions to the hotspots within the community. Now I'd like to introduce Dr. James Hildreth from Harry Medical Center. Good morning, Nashville. I've been studying viruses for 42 years, and in that time, I've conducted research, taught students, and engaged the public on numerous viruses, including influenza, hepatitis, herpes, CMV, Zika, Ebola, and SARS. But as I shared with you previously, no virus that I've studied is quite like SARS-CoV-2, the cause of COVID-19 disease. Among other things, the wide range of organs that it impacts is truly remarkable. The lungs, the gut, the brain, blood vessels, the testes, and many other organs are affected by this virus. And now in a recent set of papers published in scientific journals, we now know that this virus can impact islet cells, the cells in our bodies that produce insulin, which means that the virus can either exacerbate diabetes in those who have it or cause it in those who don't. Yet another mystery we'll have to try to solve about this virus. And as challenging as it is to understand the virus, it's more difficult for me to understand the behavior of the people that the virus infects. The virus is real. The pandemic is real. The sickness and in incomprehensible number of deaths that the virus causes, they're all real. So is the potential of the virus infecting tens of millions of people and some of those people dying, millions of them. These are all real. And yet, based on what is happening all around us, in the country, including here in Nashville, Large numbers of us, especially young adults, do not take the threat of the virus seriously. This has been rationalized in a number of ways. One of those is by observing that older people are the ones who get sick and die, not younger people. I want you to remember that two-year-olds have been infected and died from COVID-19, and individuals over 100 years old have gotten infected and recovered. Furthermore, 40 and 50 year olds are dying of strokes caused by COVID-19 and people in their 30s are dying of severe pneumonia. So you may think you will recover if you get the virus, but there's no guarantee that that will be the case. So for me, it's easier to understand the virus in some ways than it is to understand the people that the virus infects. And the other thing to keep in mind is that you may not necessarily get sick from the virus, 
but you might bring the virus home to somebody who will get sick and possibly die. So how would you feel if someone you care about that you caused their severe sickness or their death? And the one thing that we can all do, as you've heard, to mitigate the spread of the virus, wearing a mask, has somehow become politicized or being viewed as being weak or contextualized as foregoing our constitutional rights. It's been a long time since I read the Constitution, but I read it, and there's nothing in the Constitution I'm aware of that gives me the right to put your health at risk. And that's exactly what I do when I refuse to wear a mask in the middle of a pandemic with a potentially fatal virus circulating. That's why I choose to wear a mask, so as not to put your health at risk and to protect my own health by doing, this, doing so. In the early parts of this pandemic, unfortunately, there was dissonance among public health experts about wearing a mask. But now, public health expert, experts, health experts, including myself, are singing from the same sheet of music. And the song we're singing is, all of us, every one of us, should be wearing a mask if we want to put this virus behind us. The other critical strategy you heard from Dr. Jahangir in controlling the virus is testing. And I'm pleased to say that many of you, many, many of you, are taking advantage of the city's testing facilities. And that's really important, so we can make the invisible enemy visible. And as you've heard Dr. Jane here tell you, now thousands of people are being tested at the three assessment centers every week. And I'd like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the incredible job that the Meharry students, faculty, and staff are doing in running these as testing centers. Logistics required to perform hundreds of tests at three different locations every single day is amazing, and yet they make it seem so easy. So I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge that fact. So to my Meharry students, faculty, and staff, thank you for what you do. But let me also thank the good people at the local churches that we're testing at on Saturdays, the pastors and the members of those churches who come out to volunteer, thank you as well. And I also want to thank Hands On Nashville and students from Lipscomb, Belmont, TSU, and Fisk who've also joined as volunteers in this effort. So, and I think that's why Nashville can be really proud that as a city, as a community, we've come together and compared to other cities our size, we've done an amazing job. But now is not the time to let up Nashville. Let's keep this going. We got this. Please wear a mask when you're out so as not to become a vector and not be a vector for COVID-19. We got this. Let's keep it going. And with that, let me turn it over to my friend and former mayor, Bill Purcell. Well, special thanks uh, to Dr. Hildreth for uh, his introduction, but uh, more importantly, I think uh, on behalf of the mayor and everyone here, his, his leadership at Meharry, his leadership during this crisis, uh, Meharry's been a pillar of our public health establishment for 150 years and no more so than today. Uh, for the last 14 years, as Mayor Cooper indicated, we have been celebrating as a city our indigenous food, hot chicken. This year, we were not sure what we were going to be able to do. But because of the leadership of our mayor, Mayor Cooper, uh, the whole team that he has assembled, Dr. Jahangir, public health, Meharry, Dr. Hildreth, because of their leadership and, frankly, the hard work of the people of Nashville, as the mayor indicated earlier, uh, we can make an announcement today that we were not sure that we would be able to make, and that is simply that we are about to have in Nashville the world's first and best coopside, curbside, takeout, hot chicken festival, a deconstructed festival that is a response to a pandemic. We can't gather in East Park as we have every year for the last 14 years, but we can still celebrate and we can still enjoy Nashville's very special food, hot chicken. On the 4th of July, you can get up as you should and begin to think about the freedoms that we all hold dear. Those freedoms that go to the beginning of our nation and have continued ever since. But in Nashville, you'll be reminded that we have one additional freedom, which is the freedom to eat hot chicken. And on that day, you'll have the opportunity then to order, take out, 
go to your favorite hot chicken establishment in a socially distanced, COVID-aware way. Uh, you will be distanced there in line as you go in. You'll be wearing a mask, as I was a moment ago, and everyone else is here, and Dr. Hildreth made so clear we must continue to do. You'll be careful, but you'll be happy because you'll be doing that thing that Nashvilleians have been doing on the 4th of July as a part of your overall celebration. Each year, Watkins Institute, uh, with the help and support of Piedmont Natural Gas, uh, has a contest to choose a poster. Uh, the artists are part of a very special introduction to illustration class led by Dan Brauner at Watkins College of Art Institute Design and Film. This year, I'm pleased to announce the winning poster. The mayor was kind enough to allow us to do that here. We have Abby Hall, who's going to hold this up, and if this works out, has a possibility on Wheel of Fortune later in life. Uh, in this particular case, Mary Beth Parkinson has uh, won the contest, and you can see she was especially sensitive to this time. We have a, a correctly and socially uh, uh, arrayed uh, chicken wearing a mask, also latex gloves, which uh, in this case, apparently, the chicken needed to do. But in any event, uh, it is our poster and our winner, and you can go online onto our website, www.hot dash chicken.com follow on facebook follow on instagram follow on twitter the legacy establishments will all be involved you'll be able to find where they are uh, but among those legacy establishments there is one that came first and in my heart is still first uh, and that is uh, prince's hot chicken and it is my very special opportunity to introduce uh, as the mayor indicated the queen of hot chicken Andre Prince Jeffries. She's kept the flame alive through all these years, and she's here with her very special, well, you'll see it. It's the most incredible Prince's hot chicken mask. You'll all want one. See you on the 4th of July. Hello, my name is Andre Prince. I'm the owner of Prince Hot Chicken that's been in my family for almost 80 years, over 80 years, started in the 1930s by my great uncle, Thornton Prince. I am just the recipient of those who, have start, who started it, and I have just tried to continue it. That has been my goal. This is, of course, the most exciting time of the year for me and Prince Hot Chicken. This Hot Chicken Festival created by former Mayor Bill Purcell. He continues to be a very active part of it. And I am so excited. We will be participating in it at the restaurant at South on Nolensville Road, Prince Hot Chicken South, and we look forward to your visit real soon. There's no me without you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Andre. Thank you, Mayor Purcell. We'll now begin taking media questions, starting with Elizabeth Lane at WKRN. Hi, good morning. Thanks so much for taking my question. So Dr. Jahangir touched on this for just a moment. There are plenty of studies coming out showing that wearing a mask is the most important thing that you can do right now. In fact, some researchers at the University of Washington uh, just suggested that, that we could lower the death count by 33,000 by October 1st if people are diligent about wearing their mask. Is Nashville considering enforcing some kind of city ordinance that would require a mask in public? Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth, for that question. Dr. Junger. Thank you so much. Um, you know, you're right, these studies have come out. Um, and I know Mayor Cooper and Dr. Caldwell and I are studying um, all these studies and, and hopefully we'll, we'll have some 
some statement um, about that in the future. But we're really looking at all options available to us because wearing a mask is critical and whether there's an ordinance or not, all national unions need to do it. So thank you. Harriet Wallace at Fox 17. You're in the air. Yes, good morning. Uh, this is a follow to the 16 year old who died at the construction site. We have been hearing from some workers that subcontractors and contractors are not doing enough to follow safety protocols. They're also criticizing the city for giving away, uh, you know, permits to build, even though they're not properly following safety guidelines. My first question to Mayor Cooper, your response to that criticism that bad actors are getting these contracts knowing that uh, they're not following proper protocol in order to keep development going. And then what will be done to ensure the safety of people who are building the city but feel they are not being protected? Thank you. Thank you, Harriet. Mayor Cooper. Um, thank you, Harriet. Uh, I would encourage everyone, um, as I said earlier in my remarks, uh, public health responds to complaints. Complain. Get on Hub Nashville. If you are concerned that your safety as a worker or as a customer is in any way being compromised, let us know. Public health responds to complaints, and public awareness is our greatest tool. So if you and the media would get that out, we would be grateful. Let us know the specific cases where public health is not being uh, protected. And enforcement uh, does go to everything. Uh, any permit, uh, you know, if people are not complying with public health and safety, then the permitting authorities uh, want to know that, want to know that. Thank you. Brett Kelman, Tennessean. Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, I have two questions, and both of them are a little bit of a mouthful, so I apologize for that in advance. Um, first, there was a mention that we will be at phase three for 28 days before considering a progression to phase four. I guess my question is if that works the other way, too. If the outbreak were to worsen, are we going to remain in phase three for 28 days before considering a reversal to phase two? Um, my second question pertained to the contracting of the virus. I believe Dr. Wright said that 80 percent of new infections from, from household contacts. Just yesterday, Dr. Piercy with the State Department of Health said that new research they had seen statewide showed that for the first time, a majority of infections were actually coming not from household contacts. And that's significantly different. Obviously, Nashville and the state of Tennessee are not wholly the same place, but I'm curious if you could talk about why those things might be that dramatically different in the city compared to rural areas. I promised it was a mouthful. Yep. Thanks, Brett. And uh, Dr. Wright will address those questions. So first question was in regards to would we consider reversing? And I think that we would always be strategic in looking at what, how this virus is spreading in the community and that we would take appropriate action as we see fit based on what we're seeing with the data. Um, the 80%, the second question, 80% versus 35%, um, really our data shows 80%, but, uh, and, I, and I'm aware of the 35% that the governor, governor said yesterday, the restaurants and all the venues here that are open have very tight restrictions where they are not having those same types of restrictions out in a lot of our rural areas. Um, we have, we've, we've reviewed our data. It's very complete. Uh, we know that are we, I would question whether that's as complete otherwise, but yes. Dr. Hildreth also. A lot of what we observe can be understood in the context of human beings being the vec vector for the virus. And since other parts of the state opened up much more, much sooner than we did, and people began to move in a different pattern than they were moving in our city, that probably accounts for what we're seeing all over the country. Because as you know, those states that reopened 
prematurely, in my opinion, are now seeing record-breaking infections on a daily basis. And it's all because of what human beings do since we are the vectors. And that explains the difference between Nashville and the rest of the state. Thank you, Dr. Hildreth. Those are all the questions we have in the queue this morning. I'd like to thank Dr. Hildreth, Mayor Purcell, and Ms. Andre for joining us this morning. Beginning, beginning next week, Metro COVID-19 press briefings will air once a week on Thursday mornings at 9.30 a.m. The next press briefing is scheduled for July 2nd. Thank you for joining us. This concludes today's briefing. This has been a service of the Metro National Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.